After waiting 123 days to close a trade in profit, you'd think I'd be ecstatic. I mean, I'm the be satisfied with any amount of profit guy. Problem is, I closed the trade at 9% profit, earning me about $300 worth of Bitcoin, which actually doesn't sound like much of a problem, does it? The unfortunate truth is that when I woke up this morning and opened up all trading to check on my portfolio, it turns out I sold a wee bit early. How early? The price shot up an additional 300% after I sold and went to bed, which could have earned me well over $10,000 in Bitcoin. Ouch does not begin to sum up how I felt this morning. I mean, these are the kind of trades that blow up your account in the best way possible, and I sold too early. So you might be wondering, are you winning, son? To that, all I can say is, yeah, yeah, I am. Hurry up and blow up those pity party candles and put away the Kleenex, because to tell the truth, even though this trade went way higher than I anticipated, I closed in the green after being underwater for months. There's literally nothing I should be upset or frustrated about. If I choose to focus only on what I should have, what I could have done, I'll only be focusing on the negative aspects of this trade instead of focusing on the fact that this closed in the green. So here's the deal. I'm going to walk you through this trade, why I entered, when and why I bought or sold along the way, and how DCA literally rescued this trade over and over again. And by the end of this video, you're going to understand exactly why it is so important to learn how to be satisfied with any amount of profit. We're looking here at Hive BTC on KuCoin, and we're using Alltrady. Alltrady is a fantastic third-party trading platform that I've been using for almost two years now, and I love it. We can see over here in the position info, tab. Here's my position. So it opened on the 16th of May. Yes, it was open for 123 days. So the position started right here. So one thing I want to show you before I show you the entire position is why would I want to hold a position open for 123 days? That's a really long time. Well, the truth is that Hive has been good to me. I've been trading this chart ever since November 2023 or so, mainly because this chart makes some nice and juicy moves, moves where I can grow my account over and over again. So I traded this chart and I was continuing to enjoy it, but I entered here on the 16th of May, took a partial profit here, used those profits to reinvest and reinvest again, which is DCA. I even bought right here again, sold a big portion of the trade and then bought again, used those profits. And then I sat on the position expecting to sell again after DCA. But unfortunately, the price began to droop and drop. There is 64% drawdown over the course of, gosh, 75 days. I want to be clear. I did not give up on this trade. I was DCAing and averaging down my entry every single time. I'm going to show you a spreadsheet in a minute that explains exactly why this works and how well it works. So I did not give up on this chart. I was taking profit as the price was dropping, but I had exhausted the amount of funds I had already allocated in my head before entering the trade. So at this point in the chart, when I bought in again, I was hoping to get another follow-up pump to exit around the 330 range or so. But unfortunately, the price kept falling and falling and falling. Now, I have other charts just like this, and you'd be surprised that this is not the first time I've run into a chart like this. You trade it, you're selling, you're averaging down, and the price just keeps dropping. With that said, I've also seen many, many, many charts do exactly this. In a single day, it pumps 618%. The daily on this big fat green candle, 469% in a day. Yes, welcome to crypto, ladies and gentlemen. This is why I like trading crypto. So you can see right here, all of these red arrows are indicating where I took profit. Now, I took profit at my 2 p.m., 3 p.m., and again at 6 p.m. to close out my position. Unbeknownst to me, though, unfortunately, the chart continued to rise and go higher and higher and higher, going up 320%. Now, I did miss out on a 3x, but you can see right here, all these little arrows. This is me buying and selling. This is, note the time, 8 a.m., 9 a.m., 10 a.m. So I woke up the next day going, oh man, I missed out on this. But because I saw that there was momentum in the chart, I traded it and noticed where I took profit and I stopped trading it at literally the exact right time. Because a couple of hours later, we see on the hourly, negative 19%. Negative 13, negative 28%, negative 29%. Over the course of four hours, this gave back 69% of its gains. So if I had just held this position, thinking, okay, it's gonna go up into the right forever, boy, oh boy, was I sadly mistaken because it gave back literally all those profits. Did it have a little itty bitty pump after that? It sure did. Right here, it pumped up another 58%. Did I get into that? Nope, I didn't get into that and it's fine. Why? 
because I know these charts, that was the last little hurrah before this thing drags all the way back down to where it was. I've seen this happen so many times. So while I missed out on this mega 300% increase, the fact remains that I closed in profit. I actually made good money on this trade and I didn't give away my profits either. I took profit on the way up. Now, I want to explain this real quick before we look at some stats. I want to show you this. So you can see here, I got high BTC and this is where I took profit. That was my big one right there for $300. And you can see I kept trading it over and over. So I made 9%, 4%, 7%, 4%, 3%. And that's a different trade that closed recently. In one day, I made about $100 worth of Bitcoin off of the bullish momentum that was happening for this chart. So while I missed out on a 3x, the reality is that if I didn't, sell here and I just held it thinking, oh, well, this is going to go up to 10x now and gave into the euphoria, I would have been sorely mistaken. I had another chance. This is probably where a lot of people got faked out thinking, okay, this is going to go all the way back up and it gave it all back. So understand when I say with the kindest words possible, do not buy into the FOMO or the hype. Take profits on the way up. There's nothing wrong with taking profits because if you're taking profits, you are doing better than 95% of everyone else out there. The second thing I want to say is that when you follow a DCA strategy, you see it through to the end, you should be able to close in profits. Will it take longer than you want? Um, Yeah, this one took way longer than I typically like them to take, but I closed in the green and that's what matters. That's basically why I say it as my catchphrase. Okay, so now I want to show show you the actual trades that closed and how DCA allows me to average down my buy price after every single order. And we're going to go over here to Google Sheets. So here on Google Sheets, you can see that my total size for the trade was about 0.05 BTC. Now, this actually ended up being more like we'll just round it up to 300% profit, which continues to sting. I am not going to lie. So we're looking at a possible profit here of $10,000 worth of Bitcoin that I missed out on if I had sold the Pico top miraculously. So does it sting that I could have made a stinking heap of cash of BTC on this trade? Absolutely, it stings just a little bit. But when we look back at the chart, we think, well, is it at that price still? No. Was it a temporary pump? Yes. Anything that goes up too high too fast is going to go down way too fast. It's going to take a sudden turn for the worse. Trust me. Now, I want to show you this tab down here that says cost basis. This is identifying and highlighting all of my buys and all of my sells and how it affects my average price. So you can see how much I started with. And then I sold initially at 442 sats, even though this isn't 442 sats because this is nine decimal places. We're just going to say that because it's easier. But you can see I sold a little bit over half my position. If we add these two together, it says some 0.0063. This is 0.012. So I made a profit on the first trade, which is great. By doing that, I was able to average down my entry the next time I bought at a lower price. And I was able to average down again and average down again and average down again. Now, when I take profit, it's going to shift that here. Unfortunately, this is using an average weighted formula on Google Sheets, but my average did not go up when I sold. It still stayed at about 289. 307, 296. So each time I bought at a lower price, it was averaging down my average entry price. The benefit of doing DCA and sticking with it is that when I initially bought at 417, I was able to grossly average down my entry price when I bought again at 245 sats or so. So I was able to bring down 417 all the way down to about 307 or so. Now, this is just a gross estimate. It's not the exact average price, but you can see as well on the chart. I was closing in the green. I closed net positive for this trade. So this goes to show that DCA really does work when you follow the strategy. Now let's look at trading view. The first thing I want to show you is that way back here, May 16th, this is where I entered and I was expecting to see the price bounce off of here because that's what the TBO showed us. We have support. Price falls. We got an artificial pump right up to TBO support and the price keeps grinding, 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 grinding lower. Now, the truth is that whether it's the TBO or TBT diversions, nothing was really clear on this is when it's going to pump. Nothing was flashing and screaming like, oh man, this is going to pump super hard here. But the one thing that does is volume. We are looking at the TBT base to quote currency converter. This is a free indicator that you can get and I'll make sure to link it in the description below. And essentially all this does is it converts the volume of the base currency into the quote currency. And this is extremely helpful when we're using using alternative markets like BTC. I want to know how much Bitcoin can I put into this trade without me becoming a wall in the order book. So I can use the yellow line right here, which is the 30 
period moving average, which is hovering at about 0.6 BTC. So I didn't want to exceed that. I actually want to stay at least 10% of that. So I don't want to put in more than 0.06. Wait a second. Hold on. What was this over here in all trading? I didn't exceed 10% of that moving average. Again, there's a reason why I used that much and I did not add more because I knew that I was going to be a wall in the order book. Now, there is a major, major pump an injection of Bitcoin into this chart on June 8th, right here. Now, when I zoom out, I want to put it right there so you can see it on the chart. That is an irregular pump. Most of the time, look at the number right there, the gray number. We're looking at, well, about 0.63 BTC per day. This day, all of a sudden, 26 Bitcoin? That's insane. What's more insane about that is the price reaction. The price pumped 72%, which is a lot, admittedly. But the truth is that it should have pumped way more. I mean, if we zoom out, we can see some pretty insane pumps on this chart back over here as well. Like here's a pump that went up 426% in a day, but how much Bitcoin was put in in this day? Only four. So what happened here was that there was a major injection of BTC into this chart because pump and dump schemers and scammers were accumulating. Now someone fat fingered and bought way too much, but they suppressed the price to make sure it did not continue pumping higher. That's how it works. The price gets depressed, people forget about the pump and people lose interest. And notice what happens here. We see this go lower and lower and lower and lower until things get disastrously low until all of a sudden we get only 1.4 BTC on this big 400% candle. Well, what happened here is that for some reason, the scammers which weren't that intelligent, moved it over to USDT and they pumped it on the USDT side. In one day, they pumped it by 1.4 million. So something happened to this chart where they're missing a lot of BTC because 26 Bitcoin does not equal 1.4 million. That should be, well, maybe it does. I have to do the math. Maybe you're going to do the math on the screen right now. <laughs> the main thing though is that selling it for USDT was a poor choice in my opinion. You should definitely be selling it for Bitcoin. But anyway, it's interesting because if we go back to that same pump that we saw on the BTC side right here, what happened? Well, on June 8th, nothing really happened here on the USDT side. We saw $356,000 of Hive were bought, but I mean, it's not like a major pump. So don't be surprised when pump and dump schemes artificially inflate the price on one market and then pump it on another. This is what I'm basically trying to give you a hint in seeing. Now you can see right here, this is actually a trade setup that I posted in the Better Traders Club. Right here in April, we gave the entry and we entered on May 10th. And even though this red line is here, this is actually not a stop loss. This is DCA because of how I know these charts behave. And even though we had 69% drawdown, we not only hit our take profit target, but it actually closed at 135% profit as well, which is incredible. Now, another thing to consider here is that on the USDT side, we did see signals from TBT bullish divergence, which is this indicator, not the TBO, but TBT divergence, which are all of these triangles. Now, when we get several of these or rather three or more in a close proximity or what I call a cluster, we see them turn into these tabs right here. So these tabs are extremely useful because they let us know that there should be an explosive price move to come. So again, even though this did not happen on the BTC side, we saw lots of these happen before. And even there was one right here, which accurately showed a pop in price, but not anything to the magnitude that we saw for the USDT pair. But this also let us know that something was cooking. Again, use alternative markets, monitor price action. If you're in a trade for Solana BTC and you see signals firing on the USDT side on that market, take some comfort in that because if the USDT side is going to have a pump, then that means the BTC pairing is also going to pump. Now it's your turn. Leave a comment down below and share your favorite trading experience that ended up closing in profit. And if you're just getting started trading crypto in 2024, you have to watch this video next. And until the next time, you know what to do. Stay awesome and stay in the green. Peace.